What's up everybody? Welcome to another video. My name is Flip. I'm Element. And we are gonna tell you five reasons why Kings of Avatar is worth your binge. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Why are we back here, Flip? Oh boy, because I could not stop watching Kings of Avatar. <laughs> why did you introduce me to this show? Guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, please check it out. And if you have, leave your comments in the section below, leave a like, and if it's the first time you're checking us out, hit that subscribe button as well. Yes, subscribe. Five reasons, five reasons why Kings of Avatar there is There are more than binge. five reasons, but we're gonna try. There's more, but we don't wanna make a 20 minute video. <laughs> no, no, not at all. All right, let's get to it. Number one, are you a Final Fantasy fan? Yes. Awesome, because the closest thing that I can uh, compare this show to is Final Fantasy. If you've played the games or if you've watched any of the movies, they waste no effort in the graphics and special effects when it comes to the gameplay. Yeah. It's actually awesome. It's such a marvel to look at all of the epic set pieces and all of the the visualized gameplay Ooh. that they that they you know try to portray the combat in this game yes is very reminiscent of Final Fantasy especially like the the live action CG exactly movies. yeah and it'll be very familiar to you too with the world building the character building you have to level them up you have to yes. fight many different bosses a lot of RPG elements and you remember the people that you meet the stories and adventures you explore oh, it's magical and if you play Final Fantasy 14 what just happened your camera and if you play Final Fantasy XIV like I do, the the combat and the, the team aspect mm. of fighting bosses is very reminiscent of raiding. Number two is the world of esports. Such a mysterious thing, this growing esports business. Is it mysterious? It is very mysterious. There's a lot of there's a lot of communities out there in gaming that's just breaching this esports kind of barrier mm -hmm. in terms of like ESPN and be going mainstream on yes. sports channels and yes. stuff like that. We've had League of Legends championships before. We've had World of Warcraft championships before. Yeah, and even even pro athletes are buying their own teams. Rick Fox owns Echo Fox. That's a Street Fighter team as well as other games, of course. And it's one of the best things about this show because you get to go on this journey and invites you into what that world is. All the weaknesses and flaws that each individual player has to go through, it's much more relatable and you can actually explore that with them as you watch the show. It's really awesome. And the way they portray esports, especially in this kind of uh, fictional setting, mm -hmm. is that it's like it's very much like a corporate world. Right, where yes. the esports teams are companies. Mm -hmm. And so you would think that as a player of uh, MMOs myself, we have guilds, we have clans, we have uh, free companies in Final Fantasy 14, and we don't get around and gather in an office setting and have <laughs> yeah. meetings and, you know, have stand ups just to discuss what we're going to do next. Uh, when we play the game next, but these guys are meeting like this is just a, a professional env environment. Yes. Right? Even though it's a professional environment, it's st they still do it in a way where it's fun and enjoyable. Reason number three. Numero tres. Tres. Three. 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 <laughs> the theme of friendship and teamwork is yes. relevant and prevalent as you watch the show. It's the core function of Kings of Avatar. And it's just amazing because it really kind of reminds you of what it was like when you first started playing video games. Absolutely. Your 4v4s or your 6v6s mm -hmm. on a split screen uh, as you had your LAN parties or you had your friends over mm -hmm. and you played GoldenEye on the same TV. Oh, oh my god, that was so good. <laughs> yeah, and so the team aspect of everything and the friendship aspect is very prevalent in the esports world in terms of professional teams, but then you also have the team aspect of having your clan and your guild mates mm -hmm. to play with. They have world firsts, they have boss battles that they have to complete together. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever played MMOs or any kind of uh, game that's like that, you know exactly how important it is to have friends and a team. And the community that you build while you're playing, all these people that you've met, all these people that you play with, it's really amazing how it showcases team chemistry, uh, teamwork, and trust. Number four, the gameplay is fantastical. Now we touched on this earlier in this video, but we just mm -hmm. have to mention it again 
the way that they portray the gameplay is just super epic and allows them to kind of explore the CG um, mm -hmm. aspect of this show to all kinds of heights, really. It's amazing. Like, can you imagine controlling every limb of your character with your mouse and your keyboard? What is it? Like, X is your left foot, B yeah. is your, your left knee, we you know, it's just like... <laughs> keyboard it's like they're running actually yeah. left right yeah, left absolutely. right left right left you gotta right you got to do it like this to walk and then you've got it's there's just so much nuance to what they're doing of course and it looks like they're just kind of hammering on keys and they're moving their mouse around like. yes and the way that they describe the abilities and the skills that their mm. characters can do mm. it's like you have a, a degree of control over that as well mastery like doing a dragon soaring and then interrupting that into a dragon head raising mm. and if you've watched the series you know exactly what I'm talking about it's like you're, you're canceling a move into a new move that you need to control <laughs> manually because yeah. only a person can, the only, there's only one person that can do this move that has trained for years to master that mm -hmm. move. And so it's like, it's not like you're pressing an ability, you're not pressing that hotkey and then that move's coming out. You actually have to be able to do that move. Yeah, you gotta do it like this. And then go like this. Oh. So good. It's not attainable. It's not realistic whatsoever. But just the thought that it might be possible in this show, the way they portray it, it unlocks your imagination. Absolutely. That's what's so amazing. I want a game like this. Last but not least, number five. Glory is for everyone. It definitely is. And this show portrays that very, very well. Now, without giving away too many spoilers, his journey to find his way mm. after getting kicked off of a professional esports team kind of brings this notion that, you know, he's starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. But on his journey to rebuilding himself, he meets a lot of normal people that aren't professional players, uh -huh. who are just either rookies, just learning the game, or they're just normal people who play for fun. They play it for fun and they love the game for, and they for the up, game that it is. Yeah, and they end up being really good players under his guidance. Yep. And so it's like he brings a professional aspect to a game that they've just played as a hobby. Right. And then they've unlocked their potential. Yeah. The one thing that we always try to do is rekindle that spirit, that youthful energy that we we once had when yes. we were kids. When it was the first time we picked up a video game, the first time we fell in love with playing something. I don't know what it was for me, but it was Final Fantasy VII. Uh -huh. Maybe maybe there was a little bit more before that, but it's highly relatable and it's sure to touch your heart as well. So yes, glory is for everyone. It's for you guys as well. Leave your comments in the section down below if you've seen this and you want to play glory? I want to play glory. I, I think play glory, glory comes out this fall. <laughs> <laughs> season two comes out. I think, uh, you know, I don't even know when season two comes out. Uh, I think they're still in the first season. It's released weekly. Oh, that's right. Mm. So just catch it on Netflix every Friday. There's new episodes. Yes. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. Those were five reasons you should binge King's Avatar. If we missed any reasons, if you have your own reasons, please add it to the comments in the section down below. If you are new to this channel and you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell notification, do all those things to mm -hmm. keep up with us, and we will see you guys next week.